Hey, what's going on? It's Joey Myers from the Hitting Performance Lab. And in this video, we're going to show you the results of a recent study that we did where we revisited showing the numbers experiment. So in this title, this is want to, want to add between 38.44 to 48.05 feet of batted ball distance. And here's a method that is helping Nelson Cruz add ridiculous batted ball distance. We will come back to Nelson Cruz and this experiment, but we're gonna to go to the first experiment that we're revisiting from, which was titled Buster Posey video, not all in the hips. Some of you might have remembered this one. It was adding six miles per hour, average six miles per hour to bat speed using the shoulders. And we asked the question of is increased bat speed all in the hips? So we're basically revisiting this study because this was one of the first studies I did October of 2014. And there were a couple things that we will go over in this experiment that we that I wanted to introduce that was new that would make the experiment a little less biased. Before getting into the present experiment, I wanted to make make sure that we're absolutely clear on what showing the numbers versus not showing the numbers mean. So we're gonna look at this swing by Nelson Cruz. This was in 2016 towards the end of the season. He had a, it was like a 463 foot two run homer off of a, I think it was a 75 mile an hour curveball. But what you're gonna see here is Nelson Cruz in his starting position, pitcher comes set. You can kind of make out the numbers on this back here, but you're gonna see them much more clear as he goes into his load. And this is what I talk about in a, in a different video, but we talk about when to start, when this starts, and by the time they get to the landing position, you're gonna see the numbers very, very clear. You can see Nelson Cruz is 23 there as he's showing his numbers to the pitcher. So being clear, this is what showing the numbers means, going from this position to this position here. Okay, so now getting to the present experiment where we did revisiting of the Buster Posey showing numbers experiment, ask the similar question, is increased bat and ball exit speed all in the hips? We use the Zep, Zep, Zep baseball app and a ball exit speed radar gun, a Bushnell radar gun, which we'll go into in a little bit here. But I wanted to also mention that I used one of my hitters, Preston Scott, who just finished his first year in the Texas Rangers organization to do the hitting because I'm getting older and taking 200 swings when I don't normally do this really makes me sore for a week. So background research, this is pretty much the same stuff, background research that we did in the original experiment, just kind of reiterating here. And if you haven't seen that first experiment, please go visit these links. These are going to help fill in the gaps or fill in the blanks of why the experiment turned out how it did. My hypothesis in this experiment, and this is coming from the Thomas Myers Anatomy Trains book in Dr. Serge Grakovetsky's The Spinal Engine, plus my passive swing, swing experiment, I knew or I was hypothesizing that the results in this experiment would be similar to the original one, but maybe slightly lower. And the reason for that was because I didn't counterbalance the swings in the first one. So basically what I did in the first experiment is I took 100 consecutive swings with not showing my numbers and then took another 100 swings, consecutive swings, showing my numbers. And the big updates to this experiment were these three here. So we're adding the measure of ball exit speed with a, using the Bushnell radar gun. We're counterbalancing the swings, which I'll talk about in a little bit what that means, and had Preston Scott actually taking the swings themselves. Okay, so also worth noting is Preston Scott's swings, the two swings that we used for the experiment. What I wanted to point out is that we set down a couple bands, color-coded bands, these are ankle bands, resistance bands. The blue one was the band I wanted his shoulders to run. This is on the left side, him not showing numbers, which he actually is showing his numbers a little bit more than, than we'd like. And then on the right is him showing his numbers true what, what we were looking for so the blue band was for him to line his shoulders up at landing which we're breaking the swing apart into two steps just to make sure we were able to do not show the numbers versus show the numbers when we were supposed to and the red band was set at about 30 degree angle and that was the angle i wanted his shoulders to follow for this experiment so if we look at the frame where he's showing his numbers we can see him do his break it apart so this is what the swing kind of looked like so he would pause for a second or two make sure he's in the right position and then he would swing the bat on the right same thing but we are showing our numbers we can see him go from his start position to showing numbers and then he's going through with the swing so the the equipment used you can see here in the actual blog post and to access this information if you're watching this on youtube you can click the link directly below this video under the about us or whatever 
YouTube uses for the, the language there. And there'll be a link in there back to this post. So you can check that out for a little bit more in depth. But we used a Bushnell radar gun, Zep baseball app to measure bat speed, hand speed, time to impact, and attack angle, which were kind of the four different variables we we're looking at. The counterbalancing, how that works, and that's this point here, is basically we're breaking the the experiment down into 25 swing chunks and we we categorize it as a and b so a in this case was not showing numbers b was showing numbers so we take 25 swings this is how the order is kind of so a swings not showing numbers 25 then we take two b swings each are 25 of showing the numbers and so that was the counterbalancing part which takes out the warm-up factor so not being warmed up maybe they're not being warmed up bias and the getting tired bias. So those are the couple of things that we did. Also, it's interesting to note, we had to do the experiment on two separate days. So we did 100 swings one day, 100 swings another, breaking it into our two 25 swing chunks uh, in that order we just talked about. And because we didn't have enough time each day to be able to complete the whole experiment. And it's also important to note that Preston and I were working on improving his mechanics slightly. Uh, slightly different both days, but it had nothing to do with showing numbers or not showing numbers. We were working on something totally different. What we did on both day and day one and day two was we made sure that whatever we were working on was done throughout the whole experiment. So we weren't doing it the right way, working on different mechanics during showing numbers and then different mechanics on not showing numbers. The mechanics we were working on, in particular ones that had nothing really to do with the experiment, were done on all swings. So if we go down to the data collected from the Zep Baseball app. So this is the first, first two days not showing numbers. So this is putting both of the averages together on both days. And then underneath, you can see we averaged the average. So down here we had 71 miles an hour, you can take a look at this, we'll go over this in a little bit, uh, actually compare them. And then showing numbers day one and two side by side comparison, again taking the averages of both days from showing numbers and compiling averages of averages. So if we look at, and also here's a, here's a link here, again you can only access this if you come to the post. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're gonna have to click the link below the video in the about section. Uh, to access the Google Drive spreadsheet with all the ball exit speed stuff in there. In the data analysis and conclusion, this is the comparison. So you can see actually showing the numbers around the board here. So we saw a five mile an hour increase in average bat speed at impact. We saw a uh, half of a mile per hour increase in hand speed max was showing numbers. 0 0.003 seconds decrease in time to impact was showing numbers. Three degree increase in bat vertical angle and impact was showing numbers. One and a half degree increase in attack angle, positive attack angle was showing numbers. And on the ball exit speed comparison, comparing the averages, we saw not showing numbers average 65.04 mile per hour of ball exit speed. And showing numbers, we saw 74.65 miles per hour average ball exit speed showing numbers. And if we subtract those, so you don't have to do the math, that was a 9.61 mile per hour average increase when showing numbers. And that translates to, if we're using, which I tended to be con more conservative on this on this calculation, one mile per hour ball exit speed equals four feet of distance, but you can also, I've heard people do, and physics professors do this uh, for every five feet. So the first number is the four feet of distance, the other number is the five feet of distance, depending on how you calculate this number. But that's an average average of 38.44 feet to 48.05 feet of extra batted ball distance with that increase, that average increase of ball exit speed. A couple notes just as we conclude this video. One of the big obje objections from the first showing numbers experiment with the Buster Posey was time to impact. A lot of people, a lot of instructors out there say, well, showing numbers just, it, it increases time to impact because you're turning away from impact with the shoulders. Well, this experiment showed that we actually had a three thousandths of a second in, uh, decrease in time to impact. And why is this? So this is basically taking slack out of the system as it relates to compression tension forces of springy fascia acting within the body. And then from a coach's perspective, here's the obvious obvious thing. The bottom line is gaining 30, 38 to 48 feet of batter ball distance is a big deal, especially when it comes to scoring runs. That is it of the revisiting the showing numbers experiment. Make sure that we're swinging smarter by moving better. And before I let you go. The Hitting Performance Lab wants to know, did you know repeatable hitting power does not start in the hips? Have you heard the expressions, load and explode the hips? Power comes from the hips. Well, we created a free video revealing the results of a scientific study that will show you how we added 48 feet of batted ball distance instantly. And it's not all about the hips. Click here now to get the video.
while it's still free.